Right, so I have some welterweights and I have some middleweights that Darren Till could potentially fight because at this point, he's struggling in the middleweight division. Arguably, you could say he should move to BKFC. I think he would do well there in bare knuckle, but he is 29, so he has got time to develop in the UFC still. So starting off with Brian Barberena, you're going to get angry at this, but I do think that's an easy fight for Darren Till. And the reason I say that's easy, look at the fighters he's beaten. He beat Darian Weeks, he lost to Jason Witt. He fought Robbie Lawler, and think about that fight again. Robbie Lawler was piecing him up on the feet. A 40-year-old Robbie Lawler, by the way. Not like Robbie Lawler in his prime, moving out of the way of Brian Barberina's jabs, and he's slipping underneath his punches and catching him against the cage. But then eventually, yes, I know he bottled that fight and lost, but Darren Till, I think he'd have a field day. Like, you look at his last three fights, arguably, you could say he lost to Matt Brown, and I think he did. It was a split decision and you could have given it to Matt Brown, and Matt Brown is not the best anymore. He was all right back in the day, but now, come on. If you're struggling against Matt Brown, Darren Till could come back against someone like Brian Barberena and do good. Yes, Brian barberena has got power, but he's not too technical on the feet, and neither is Matt Brown. And I think Darren Till, although you might call him one-dimensional, I think that one-two would do well against someone like Brian Barberena. And Darren Till's probably got more power than someone like Robbie Lawler at this point, so I do think he would put him away. And then we go to the first middleweight opponent. You're going to get angry at this, but I do think this is a risky fight for Darren Till. Bruno Silva, if you don't know who he is, look back at that fight with Alex Pejea. You could argue he was beating Alex Pejea in the first round. I know he lost the fight via unanimous decision, but in my opinion, he's probably got the best chin in the UFC. If you can survive Alex Pejea's left hooks, when you've got people like Adesanya who couldn't do it, Sean Strickland and there's others but you're gonna argue that oh look at that fight with Gerald Mearshaft he was getting outboxed by some jiu-jitsu guy and the reason I think he was getting outboxed by him something wasn't well with him that day you could tell something was off and I think against Darren Till Darren Till probably wins and I think he could beat him by decision because there's no way Darren Till would knock out Bruno Silva yes Gerald Mearshaft knocked him down but he didn't knock him out he's got a granite chin and neither did Alex Pejea and Alex Pejea is spamming hooks to his head against the cage but against Adesanya put him down so I'm saying Bruno Silva probably wouldn't win this fight but it is a risky fight because when he gets a win it's always a knockout I think he's got like 19 TKOs out of 22 finishes that's something that you see from someone like Yuri Prohaska or something and I do think it'd be risky but Darren Till would maybe win that fight but it's not guaranteed next we have Chris Curtis you might get angry at this but I'm also gonna say it's in between smart and risky but I will say smart because I look at Chris Curtis in his fights. I think someone said it in the comments. He is very inactive when he fights. He like stands there with like a high guard and he waits for his opponent to like unload on him and then come up with a strike. He's like quite slow, but he's got a lot of power and he's that type of guy. You could be winning the fight like I could see a Masvidal situation. He's doing well and then out of nowhere he comes like flying with some like wild hook and puts him down. Look at the Buckley Chris Curtis fight. Buckley's piecing him up in his guard. And then all of a sudden, I believe it was in the second round, catches him with the leg and then catches him with a cross and he puts him out cold. He's that type of guy. 17 KO finishes. And I think he's got a lot of decisions as well. And he's got a lot of experience, more than Darren Till. But Darren Till has fought better opposition. But people like Chris Curtis do cause that problem. But I put it towards Smart, like I said before, because he hasn't got the best movement. And if Darren Till can keep moving and try and fight on the back foot, I could see him winning that fight. Even though he's got that one-two, he could do one-two, step back, one-two, step back. And as long as Darren Till doesn't try and trade in the pocket, I think he can win that fight. That's why I'm saying smart. But I can understand why you would say risky because he's got loads of power. And his power is quite similar to Bruno Silva when you look at their records. But you could also see he's got loads of decision wins as well. But he's also got a chin on him as well. So Darren Till would struggle to put him away. But I think he could beat him on points. Next, Edmund Shabizen. As of right now, I think it's a smart fight. Darren Till's not going to come back for a long time. And I know Edmund Shabizen was on a losing streak. They're both young. I think Edmund Shabizen's a bit younger and he throws a lot of kicks. And I could see Darren Till's one two working perfectly. Like Edmund Shabizen goes for like a head kick. And then you see Darren Till come forward with a one two. He's dealt well with kickboxers in the past. Like we look at that Cerrone fight. Yes, he can wrestle, but he likes to strike a lot on the feet. And I'm not comparing him to Edmund Shabizen, but I'm saying he can deal with people who throw a lot of kicks. And it is a smart fight because I think Darren Till got a lot of power. Edmund Shabizen 
his chin hasn't been the best. But then you could argue after that year off, it's like his chin's back to normal again because he dealt with someone like Luchambuga, who's very good when it comes to power. And we'll go on to him now. Luchambuga, easy fight. That'd be the easiest fight of Darren Till's career. Well, that's an exaggeration. It wouldn't be the easiest, but it'd be so easy to beat him. He looks huge and he's like some bodybuilder. And I would not be surprised if he's taking something. I'm not accusing him. I'm just saying he looks too big. Look at those insertions on his body. But I think Darren Till would have a field day like... A 1-2 combination puts him down. He also fought Mohamed Edenak alive. I don't know how he fought him, but front kick to the head. Darren Till, easy fight for him. Easier than Brian Barberena. And it is at middleweight, so you might say, oh, we'll struggle, but I don't think he will. And then we go to Yaquin Buckley. Again, smart fight. I think Yaquin Buckley is like a realistic fight the UFC would make because it's in the middleweight division, but we don't know if he's going to move down to welterweight. That's a possibility. But I think in that type of fight, Buckley... He's got more combinations than Darren Till. But there's one thing that Din Thomas said about him. It's like when he's in the pocket, there was times when Chris Curtis when he could have shot for a takedown. I know he's not a wrestler, but against Chris Curtis, he should have tried to at least use it because Chris Curtis, full of power. So is Buckley. But because Buckley is so explosive in his fights, he gets caught a lot. And that's why we saw against Chris Curtis, he caught the leg and caught him with a straight down the middle and put him down to the ground. He keeps his chin up. I don't think that's the issue, but it's when he's swinging wildly, it allows you to get caught with openings. Whereas you've got someone like Edmund Shabaisen, more technical. He doesn't swing wildly, but he will get caught just because of the fact that he's a kickboxer and he's going to have to worry about throwing that kick and then Darren Till being able to come forward and blitz him with a straight down the centre. But Yaquin Buckley could win that fight, but if I'm honest with you, Darren Till, I'm like 80% confident he'd win it. But that would be an exciting fight to watch. Li Jin Liang. Risky fight. A lot of people are going to say that's a smart fight to me. I don't think it is because Li Jing Liang, I believe he's got one of the highest knockout rates at welterweight. Darren Till, he hasn't got a bad chin. I will give him credit, but it's Li Jing Liang. And his only loss that I can remember of significance, Hamzat Shemaev, and I believe he lost to Neil Magny. And I'm not including Daniel Rodriguez because we all know it was a robbery. But against Darren Till, I think he would do very well because he's also got submissions and he's probably not going to take Darren Till down. Although weird things like that do happen in MMA, but I don't think he would be able to do it with ease. Because Li Jing Liang's got very good head movement and Darren Till's so one-dimensional. I could see him like slipping out of the way of Darren Till's like cross and then coming up with like a left hook and putting him down to the ground. But Darren Till can win that fight, but it's not like a smart fight in my opinion to me. Michael Ullenishik. I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry, but smart fight. If you don't know who he is, he's from Poland and he fights the journeyman of the division. Like He beat Sam Alvey. He retired Sam Alvey, I'll say. And I believe he fought Shamil Gatsov and he beat him in his second fight in the UFC by KO. But his first fight was not convincing. He won his first fight by split decision. And I'm talking about that Russian guy he beat. And he hasn't fought in a year and I don't know where he is right now. And this Michel guy is very big as well. He can fight a light heavyweight, but I do think Darren Till can deal with that. Remember, he fought Robert Whittaker. Robert Whittaker is a big middleweight. He can fight a light heavyweight. He was considering it. And against Michel Ogenishup, I think he could do well. Because I don't see the hype around this guy. I know he's 17 and 5. He's young. But come on, beating Sam Alvey is not an impressive win. But that Russian guy, you could argue was. But then you look at that Russian guy's record. And then you see a lot of the fighters he beat are in a different organisation and they don't look the best. But I do think that would be a good fight to make and I do think Darren Till would win that. Right, another welterweight fight, Nico Price. I think he could beat Nico Price. He's a good boxer on the feet. He had a no contest with Donald Cerrone. I think he was losing that fight against Philip Rowe. Yeah, he was losing that fight and his boxing, it didn't look the best. So like there was a time in that fight where I believe he hurt Philip Rowe, but that wasn't enough to get in the round. And then he ended up getting TKO'd and against Darren Till, I think this would be an easier type of fight. I'm not going to put it in easy. I don't know why. I just think it seems inevitable that he get a KO on him. Like, if you're letting a jiu-jitsu guy, I know that guy has power, but he's mainly a jiu-jitsu guy and he KO'd him, then Darren Till's got a high chance of KOing him. And I know MMA math doesn't make sense, but then you have to think about the style of Nico Price. And just knowing that, I just know Darren Till would beat him. Robbie Lawler, smart fight. No, you know what? Easy fight. I'm thinking of like a prime Robbie Lawler. But Robbie Lawler at 40 years of age, if Darren Till can't beat him, 
he's got to retire and do something else. I don't think boxing would be for him if he can't beat Robbie Lawler or BKFC. But I do think he would beat him and he would do it with ease. Robbie Lawler is very good at technical boxing. It's got good head movement and then catching you and piecing you up. But he's got no power in his hands anymore. Like I'm thinking about that fight with Brian Barberena. He was throwing punches at him, but it looked like they weren't doing damage. He was trying to piece him up with volume. And yes, he won the round because Brian Barberena was struggling to land on him. But I don't think there was any time in that fight where I thought he was going to put him away. Yes, he was backing up Brian Barberena, but that doesn't mean that he's going to put him away just because he's on the fence. And I do think Brian Barberena would be a harder fight because remember, Brian Barberena did beat Robbie Lawler, but it wasn't a convincing win. So if Brian Barberena can come back like that, Darren Till, I believe, in the first round could put him away. And I know being one-dimensional would cause problems against someone like Robbie Lawler because he's got the head movement, but he's getting older now. The CTE will start to kick in and he'll make mistakes. Like He'll catch him with a one-two and then he won't be able to like defend well against it because his chin has deteriorated because of all the wars he's been in. Like Remember that Rory McDonald fight? Like Stuff like that builds up over the years. And I think Darren Till would beat him probably in the first round or if it's the second round, early second. Santiago Ponzinibbio, smart fight in my opinion. Like he's coming off a win to Alex Morona, but think about that fight. He was losing two rounds to a fighter who was called up on short notice. And yes, he has short notice to prepare for Alex Morona, but Morona has short notice to fight him. Like he hasn't been training. He's probably on break after his last fight. Santiago was training originally for Robbie Lawler, so a striker. And usually Morono strikes on the feet, but he does show that he can grapple also. And against Santiago, he did grapple at times, but I think it was majority striking. And he just outboxed him. And I can't believe what I was watching. Like Alex Morono was outboxing Santiago Ponzinibbio. Like, how do you even do that? But Santiago did come back. But that was a poor thinking skills by Alex Morono. Like all of a sudden, he puts his hands down, gets caught with a right hand, and then gets caught again, put on the cage, and then he gets finished. Like he bottled that fight. He was dominating that fight. He had him all cut up and busted open. It was looking like he was winning it. And then that happens and he loses the fight. But Darren Till, smart fight to make. He got two strikers. Yes, he has submissions, but he's not a grappler. And if you want to talk about submissions, they happened over 10 years ago. Maybe even longer, maybe 12 to 13 years ago. And he doesn't really grapple in fights. Like he likes to strike on the feet and he's got a lot of power in his hands. But Darren Till, in my opinion, would beat Santiago Ponzinibbio. If you get an outbox by Alex Morono, I'm sorry. I do think Darren Till would beat him. And Alex Morono is good at striking, but he likes to grapple. I believe he trains at a jiu-jitsu gym. So I think he was probably training more with the grappling aspect compared to the striking aspect. But he still managed to use it on Santiago and almost finish him, but he lost the fight, so I have to give Ponzinibbio credit. But I'm sorry, it weren't impressive. And then lastly, Tony Ferguson. Again, easy fights. So there is loads of fights you can make with him that you could say are easy, but we need to give him this right now because he's not in the right state of mind. He lost to Duplessis and Tony Ferguson, I do think it'd be easy. Not the best wrestler, takes a lot of punches to the head. He can strike, I know he knocked down Chandler, but Darren Till's not wild like Chandler, coming in with wild hooks, leaving his chin exposed. Ferguson won't be able to knock him down, and he's on a five-fight losing streak, I think. When you think about that, five fights he's lost. I think, I might be massively wrong, it's like four or five fights. And Darren Till's on a three-fight losing streak. And I don't think the UFC would make this for Tony Ferguson's sake, because I think Darren Till would put him away. He's got the jiu-jitsu, but the takedown defense of Darren Till is very poor. But you've got to remember, he'll be a big welterweight. So I think he'll be able to stop the takedowns of Tony Ferguson if he tries them. And you never know, Tony Ferguson's very unorthodox. He might start spamming him in Ari rolls. And you never know, he could catch him in some like heel hook and make him tap out. But let's be honest, it's Darren Till. I don't think he's going to be able to like spam an Iminari roll and submit him. And I know I've said his takedown defense is bad, but come on, it's Tony Ferguson. He's not a takedown artist. He's a striker on the feet who likes to get taken down and fight from those positions, attack submissions from the back. Darren Till isn't going to entertain that. He's going to try and strike on the feet. Tony Ferguson's probably going to try and strike back. But imagine if somehow Tony Ferguson took down Darren Till and submitted him. I would think Darren Till would have to retire if that ever happened. I don't think it would. But look at the way how he tried to take down Nate Diaz. He telegraphed it too early. Nate Diaz could see it coming. And I think Darren Till, even though he hasn't got good takedown defense, 
he would stop the takedown to Tony Ferguson, especially if he shoots in like he did against Nate Diaz. And Darren Till and Stephen Thompson are in a very similar situation, so they're both strikers, but they're coming up against grapplers and they just can't do well. But when they start to fight strikers, you can see the striking is still there. Think about it. That Duplessis fight, he was still catching him with that one-two when he got up on the feet because Duplessis was tired from clinching onto him. So I do think he's still got the boxing. So all it is is fighting grapplers. So yeah, that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will be surprised if you don't agree with those risky fights because Bruno Silva, I'm sorry, no one really talks about him because of that Gerald Mirshaw fight, but I'm giving that as a one-off because he didn't look right. You could just tell body language, everything. Chris Curtis, I wouldn't be surprised if you said put him in risky fight. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.